all my low woo 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 all my all my low lo J all my lo low lo low lo everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my February wrap-up for 2022 um, February was not the best reading month for me I finished a total of eight books which I usually finish like 15 to 20 books in a month but we went through a breakup uh, we started seeing another person so I've been spending a lot of time with him so basically no reading has been done but I did complete eight books so I will talk about them in this wrap-up so without further ado let us get started the first book that I'm going to talk about is is The Red Palace. This is by June Her, and I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This takes place in 1758, where 18-year-old Hayon has spent her entire life trying to become a palace nurse. As an illegitimate daughter in Korea, her options are very limited, but she has the hopes of gaining her father's approval one day. That's when multiple brutal murders occur, and Hayon's mentor is accused of the crime. So she does says that she is going to try to clear her mentor's name by launching this secret investigation with the help of a young, very handsome police investigator. If you've been on this channel for a while, you probably know by now that historical fiction is not my go-to. I don't usually tend to love them the way that I love like fantasy or mystery thrillers, but this was an interesting enough story. I did enjoy my time reading it, but at times I did find the pacing a little bit slow, which definitely drew me out of the story on multiple occasions. I did enjoy the overall mystery and trying to figure out what was going on throughout the story. This story is definitely a lot more gory than I thought it was going to be going into it, so if you do have a weak stomach, definitely keep that in mind before picking it up. I liked Hyun. I think that she was a very strong main character, and I really liked the slow burn romance that she developed throughout the story. I think that the romance was very sweet in the end. I also really liked the author's note at the end because it gave us the inspiration for the story and why the author chose to write it, which I thought was really interesting because I had no idea that that history even existed. Overall, it was an enjoyable murder mystery historical fiction and I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up is Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. This is the author of House of Salt and Sorrows which is why I initially picked this up because I loved that first book. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. It was good but it definitely did not live up to my love for House of Salt and Sorrows. So this story follows Ellery Downing and her family who live in the quiet town of Amity Falls which is bordered by a very dense forest and lots of mountains. The townsfolk take turns going out on supply runs to supply for the town, but when the last supply run never returns and a brutal, bloody massacre is discovered in the forest, people begin to worry about what may be lurking out there, and it's like the story of that. So like I said, I have been a fan of Erin A. Craig's writing style since I read House of Salt and Sorrow, so I was very excited that she was going to be taking on another retail telling. This one is Rumpelstiltskin. She just really knows how to write suspense and just the overall vibes of her stories is so immaculate. I was instantly sucked into this small town and I honestly felt trapped there with these characters. I do think that it took a bit of time to get the story going. There was a lot of groundwork that had to be laid before anything actually exciting happened in the book. I do think that the story dragged a little bit at times, so I do think that the book could have been cut down a little bit and still gotten the overall vibes and plot across. Ellery was an interesting character. I do think that she had to grow up very, very quickly for all of the hardships that fell upon her family, but I do like her overall growth and development as the story progressed. I did like the mystery behind Whittaker, but I do think that his storyline was rather predictable, so that kind of drew me out of the story a little bit. But overall, I really did enjoy the secluded town vibes. Definitely a fun mystery, and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up, I have Ophelia After All by Raquel Marie. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. So this book follows Ophelia, who is known by her friends and family as the boy crazy one. She is known for always 
having a lot of crushes. But then she begins to have feelings for a girl and she's not quite sure how to navigate those feelings. So as time goes on and her feelings begin to grow even stronger, Ophelia has to decide whether or not to keep her secret close to her heart or open up to those who care about her and go on this journey of self-discovery. I think that this is definitely a very important story. I think that it is going to help so many people who are questioning their identities. I love the overall message that change is inevitable, it's going to happen, and that's okay. I also really loved how this had positive parental relationships. I think that it is very rare in a book that we see those supportive, loving parents. The relationship with her mother was a bit rocky at times, but I do think that you could feel that underlying love through and through as you continued reading. You could definitely tell that mom wanted to be supportive and just wanted Ophelia to open up. I also really liked how almost every side character was a part of the LGBT QIA plus community and it wasn't made into this huge deal. It just was something that was. Wesley was definitely my favorite character. He is just such a little cinnamon roll and was just such a great support for Ophelia as she was questioning everything. I think that Sammy is the only character that I can say I genuinely was not a fan of. I just found him to be very annoying at times and just all of his actions were very selfish and it just got very annoying very quickly. I also wasn't the biggest fan of Lindsay, but I'm not 100% sure if that was the point and I wasn't supposed to like her. I honestly could not tell, but not a fan. The biggest complaint I have about this book is the miscommunication trope as well as the love triangle trope. I am not the biggest fan of those. That is a personal preference. So a lot of people will probably love this book, but just some of the tropes were not for me, so I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Aristotle and Dante Dive Into the Water of the World by Benjamin Allaire Senez. This is like the longest title ever. This is the sequel to Aristotle and Dante Discover the World, and I gave it a 3.5 stars. I think that it was a cute story. It picks up right where the first book left us. I think that Ari had such amazing character development in this. I loved watching him grow as the story progressed. I think that that was the best part of the story, honestly. I also really liked the family dynamics in this book. I really liked how we got to know the families of both Ari and Dante so much more in this, and I loved how both sets of parents were just so loving and supportive and caring of who these boys were, and they were always willing to talk to them if they needed to. I wasn't the biggest fan of the ending of this book. I do think that it was a little bit rushed and wish that it had been flushed out a little bit more, but I also think that the book became very repetitive very quick so it could have been cut down more, if that makes any sense. The balance just wasn't there, but overall I do think that it was a very cute story, so I did give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up we have Anatomy, a love story by Dana Schwartz. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This takes place in 1817 and the main character Hazel Sinnett wants nothing more than to become a medical surgeon. So she enrolls in the renowned surgeon Dr. Beecham's medical class in order to prepare for the examinations, but she does it under a disguise. When she is discovered, she is kicked out of the medical course for being a woman, so she makes a deal with the doctor. If she is able to complete the medical examination, the university will then allow women to enroll in these courses. Hazel has no idea how she is going to pass these examinations with just her medical books, but then she meets a resurrection man named Jack. Hazel hires Jack to bring her bodies in order to practice on for this examination, but Strange men have been seen around the graveyard and people are starting to go missing and it's kind of like the story of that. Can we just take in the concept of this cover? I am obsessed. It is so well done. I will say that the book was a fun mystery, but I was able to call it very early on what was the ending. I really liked Hazel as a main character. I think she was a very strong female lead. I loved how she never gave up on her dreams. She knew what she wanted and she was gonna go for it no matter what. I really enjoyed the slow burn romance. I loved watching them grow closer as time went on. I listened to this on audiobook and I do think that the narrator did an incredible job with this cast of characters. So overall, I did give it a 3.5 just because I was able to call it so early but still a really good time. The next book I'm not going to talk too much about because I am going to have a dedicated vlog for it once I finally edit it. That needs to be done. But it is The Third Twin by CJ Omo. 
low blue the amount of times I had to take that take <laughs> I gave this book a two out of five stars I did not like it very much I just really did not enjoy the main character in this book which makes it very hard to enjoy a story so I gave it two out of five stars I went into this completely blind which you will understand if you watch the vlog that I will link down below just was not it the the, the whole concept of this book fell apart very quickly so yeah. Next up I have My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. So this book follows Jade Daniels who is a half Indian social outcast of her own making. Living with an abusive father and a very absent mother, Jade has turned to slasher horror films for comfort. Jade has spent a very long time growing and developing her knowledge of these films as she grows up in the small town of Proof Rock, Idaho. There is one thing that Jade knows for sure and that is that she is not a final girl. But as Proof Rock turns into a real life a slasher movie, she must use her unusual knowledge to predict what is going to happen next and protect herself and it's like the story of that. I definitely think that I am very much the unpopular opinion about this book because I know so many people enjoyed it but I was just so bored throughout the majority of it. I genuinely thought that this was going to be a favorite of the year when I read the prologue. Like, I was so for it, but it quickly became very slow and very repetitive to the point where I had to push myself to finish the book. It does all come together in the end, and it is very clever, but the fact that I had to push myself to that point to get to the end just made the enjoyment far less than it could have been. I did enjoy how multi-layered this book was. There was so much trauma that Jade was working through as the story progressed, so I did find that aspect very interesting. The book it definitely has a lot of very intense gory scenes and a lot of conversation about rape, sexual harassment, and abuse, so if those are triggers for you, I would definitely skip this book. It was interesting to read so I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for this wrap up for February 2022 is The Christie Affair by Nina de Gramont and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is a reimagining of the 11 days that renowned author Agatha Christie went missing told through the eyes of her husband's mistress. I did enjoy this. I think that it was an interesting concept and I think that it could have been a lot more interesting if the pacing wasn't so slow. It took a very long time to get to the actual story. I think that the dual timeline was really interesting. We had Nan the mistress in the past growing up with her childhood sweetheart Finbar as well as spending time in a convent and then we also had the present day where Agatha went missing and Nan had become the mistress to Agatha's husband. I really liked getting the backstory of Nan and how slash why she ended up in the predicament that she did and her motivations behind her actions was really interesting interesting. I think that the biggest complaint I have about this book is the ending. I could call that shit from a mile away which was really disappointing and definitely brought my enjoyment down but I do think that people who are into historical fiction will really enjoy this book so take my 3.5 with a grain of salt. It was still an interesting book to read. Alright everybody so those were the eight books that I read for February 2022. Next month will hopefully be better. It is currently March 5th and I have read zero books, so maybe not, but we got we got hopes. We're, we're gonna spend the day reading today once I edit this video. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!